Hello. This is a format we came up with years and years ago where the badge team lead stands at the front and talks and the rest of the team sit at the back and heckle. That is uh, what I used to be one of those people oh, no, and I don't. regret it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they want to hear what the format is. No? Just, just get no. on with it. <laughs> First off, I, I've, I've got to thank our sponsors. They have done such amazing work. Uh, Expressive have given us parts that didn't exist when, as of, what was it, three months ago? Three months ago, the, the chip on your badge didn't exist at all, and we got like the first production run of them. It's brilliant. Um, PCB GoGo have manufactured and assembled 10,000 boards for us. That is a heck of a lot of boards. And they've done it in a ridiculously short time frame and fixed many, many problems, which we'll go over in this talk. <laughs> many so. of them are entirely our fault. Mm. So, quite a, quite a long time ago now, we were developing a badge for EMF 2020. It was quite cool. We, we got to the prototype stage, we had Lots of pictures, little bits of art, stuff like that. We we had it all planned. It was great. You know, everything was going well. Uh, and then there was an apocalypse. Uh, everything everything was terrible. EMF was cancelled. So well, you know, we we decided to uh, take take a positive spin on it. It's like it's great. We've got two entire years where we don't have to do anything because we've already designed a badge for the next EMF. Uh, yeah. And then the apocalypse continued, it became 2021, and all the silicon in the entire universe vanished. Uh, this is one of the chips we were planning on using, it costs $104, $104 now. Uh, that would blow out our budget quite a bit and Jonty would get sad with us, and we don't want to make Jonty sad. Uh, so yeah, it, it doesn't exist, so we, we kind of panicked a bit, and we had a bit of a brainstorming session. We came up with some fantastic um, badge ideas. Um, I think one of my favorite ones, the musical soldering iron, was a good idea. Um, it, it's both an MP3 player and a soldering iron. Um, quadcopter was quite good. And the thermal sensing monocle badge, just because it means we get to use round LCDs and I'm slightly obsessed with round LCDs. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we went through all of these. And yeah, we carried on with the brainstorming. We decided to go with the one that was between the deauthor, particularly to troll the knock, and the high voltage badge, which would probably like kill everyone. Uh, apparently, we're not allowed to do that either. First aid get annoyed at us. <laughs> so yeah, we, we designed a new badge. We we went with a microcontroller that didn't exist yet, and Expressive would guarantee that we could get them before the event. Quite close to the event, but still before the event. Technically. <laughs> yeah. Sort of mostly before the event. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a fast, it's a fast schedule. We think we could do it. It's fine. Yeah, let's go. So, we're a few weeks ago now. We, we have prototyping. We're, everything seems to work. It's starting to look pretty. We're doing pretty well. Yeah, and it all good. went perfectly well. Nothing yeah. at all. Yeah. Thank long. you for attending the talk. Yeah. You've been Goodbye, wonderful. Thank you. Th those four months, we had no stress <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the first disaster. We decided to be clever. When we started designing, we wanted a crypto chip on the thing. And we found somebody who had 3,500 of them in stock. So we bought them straight away. Then we tried to use them, and it turned out they didn't in any way support any of the crypto that we needed. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to buy 3,500 A1000 chip, 1006 crypto chips, if you email badgetmfcap.org, uh, we can sell you them. Apparently they are now worth more than we paid for them. So, you know, it will help fund EMF. Uh, <laughs> So we, we did a redesign. We managed to find a chip that we could buy and we could afford. We couldn't talk to it over I squared C, which is unfortunate because ideally, if you have a chip on your board, you want to be able to actually use it. Um, it's a bit of a pain. We couldn't get any, any of them. They just, we could get three and a half thousand of them from China. We couldn't get one of them. Uh, apparently, that's the thing. We found a dev kit left over from 2014. It was incredibly expensive, but it had some chips in that we thought might be kind of the right one. They were kind of the right one. We still couldn't actually talk to them. 
Um, that was fun. So yeah, this is interesting. So microchip on the crypto chips, they don't label them. As part of their overall security features, the part marking for all crypto devices is intentionally vague. The marking on the top of the package does not provide any information as to the actual device type or the manufacturer of the device. This isn't security, this is just silly, but you know. We're not an IC manufacturer, surely it's fine. Uh, so yeah, have I already said this bit? You got, you got the last point. Ah, yes. We managed to talk to it in the end. We were trying to talk to it at five times the speed it wanted us to talk to, and we just forgot to turn that bit on. This will be a theme. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I did actually try, when we got these, to um, pull some strings because I have, through work, some contacts within Microchip. Um, I spoke to somebody quite high up in their um, tech support, and they, they told me when I asked them that, as part of Microchip's overall security features, the part marking for all crypto devices is intentionally vague. So yeah, it wasn't as useful as I was hoping. So yeah. Here's some fun. When you try to buy three and a half thousand of things, something, your, your vendors just vanish. This battery vendor, every three months for the past six years, has sent us an email saying, do you want to buy anything? We've got loads of batteries. Come and buy some batteries. We've got batteries. Come and buy batteries. You send them an email, and they're like, batteries? What? We don't sell batteries. If, they just... if anybody finds these vendors, please email badge at emfcamp.org. <laughs> So yeah, we, we weren't getting any response from this battery, and this was about a month ago, and it takes about a month to get batteries from China to the UK. Uh, this was becoming an issue. Uh, we, we sent out the back signal at this point, and we spoke to other European-based um, conference badge teams, and we stole their supplier who is amazing. They, they email to all of our, they respond to all of our emails. They send us loads and loads of emails. They send me random WhatsApps. They once called me on the phone. It was weird. <laughs> they also doubled our battery capacity as soon as you asked. Yeah. So the first, first battery we got through, they were going to give us 70 milliamp hours, which, you know, we could have done with. And slowly, in between us paying for the battery and them actually shipping them, they managed to keep increasing the capacity of them. I'm not sure how, but we're pretty sure they're not lying. Like, 95% sure. <laughs> so yeah, we, we'd got the batteries. The batteries were on the way. That was happening fantastically. The problem was we didn't have the everything else that goes on the circuit board. Um, we'd sent quite a lot of money to our um, China sourcing expert who had as far as we could tell, just stop responding to our emails after we'd sent him all this money, which isn't what you want after sending somebody a heck of a lot of money. Um, so yeah. <laughs> he wasn't getting our emails. We weren't getting his. Neither of us had realized that we were both waiting for an email from another person that had already been sent. Eventually, I was um, yeah, getting to the point of writing emails that started as per my last email. Um, <laughs> And then somebody pointed out to me that I could, in fact, phone them, and what? that worked straight. I know. <laughs> Apparently, these things can actually be used to make phone calls. I hear that uh, we gave out phones in a previous year. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, we, we got in touch, and it turned out that our email sending solution wasn't, uh, which is not ideal. So yeah, we started production. We had all the bits. Everything was going well. And then we stopped production because everything broke. So yeah, Wi-Fi was just completely broken. We had tested this as part of our initial prototypes. We tested it by having a look and seeing if we could see any Wi-Fi networks. What apparently none of us had ever thought to test was, was if you could actually connect to a Wi-Fi network. Turns out you couldn't. Um, yeah. When we transmit, nothing, nothing was happening, and sometimes it was just resetting. So we started going a bit silly with this. We were adding extra capacitors everywhere. There are inductors. This picture down here has a little kind of high rise of capacitors on it, trying to, trying to figure out what the heck was actually going on. Nothing helped. We, we got our RF wizards in. 
they started generating these strange cut charts. I'm pretty sure it's the tea leaves that they're actually doing. But yeah, even that, nothing, nothing was found. It just wasn't, wasn't working, and it should have been working. And then we figured out that you could take the antenna off, and it worked. <laughs> Which is sort of the opposite of what you normally expect with an RF circuit. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a bit weird. Uh, so yeah, we, we've just turned down the power of, turned down the volume a bit, and it turns out it's not talking over itself anymore. And it now kind of works. You have to stand fairly close to a DK, as you all will have found trying to update your badges. Uh, yeah, it works. So yeah, fantastic. We can restart production again. Oh wait, no. <laughs> this is a USB-C connector. USB-C is brilliant. It's on everything nowadays. Uh, this is a USB-C connector with very, very wobbly pins. And apparently, that is incredibly difficult to actually manufacture. So yeah. They came with bent pins. Uh, PCB GoGo, who uh, manufactured our boards, they were reworking them as they were coming off the line. They did 150 and then just asked us to actually try and get them connectors that would work. Um, so yeah, we, we got our component sourcer to start yelling at people. He yelled at the right people and they said, oh yeah, we'll send you over a replacement reel. They'll be ready at the beginning of June. Um, yeah, that's, that's a bit too late. We asked if we could delay EMF until July, but apparently there's another festival here at the time, so we're not allowed to do that. <laughs> so yeah, we, we figured out a really cool, well, PCB GoGo figured out a really cool way of getting around this. They made a stencil that has two different layers in it to allow you to add more solder paste underneath the USB-C connector and just kind of have enough goo there to grab the pins. Is that right? That sounds right, yeah? Yeah, so like they, they made a stencil that is thicker on one end than the other. Yeah. <coughs> so goo. the tower of solder, tower of goo on there yeah. is taller and it reaches the bent pins. Yes. And doesn't short too many of them out. Right. Yeah. Well, it, it short, we got one out of all of the badges we made that wasn't working after that, which is pretty amazing considering it was all of them that were broken beforehand. So yeah, they then gave us two assembly lines and as far as I can tell, literally everybody in their factory and made all of our PCBs. This was about two weeks ago now, so um, yeah. It feels like two months. It but. does. I'm pretty sure I've got quite a lot more gray hair than I had when I started. Uh, so yeah, it, it was done. The board had shipped. Then this happened. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'd, li I'd like to personally apologize to Ren for annoying them so much with what flight is leaving from Hong Kong airport at right now? What's going in an hour? <laughs> we, we did actually track it down to the correct flight. So all, all our estimates were exactly correct and we knew exactly what plane our packages were on at every point in time. We can't yes. write software, but we can track DHL flights. <laughs> Handily, it turns out DHL are incredibly pessimistic when it comes to getting things through UK customs. And we actually managed to get these like a week before they're expected, which is good because getting them tomorrow would have been non-ideal. <laughs> so yeah, they arrived. There's, there's like boxes and all sorts. This is the badge tent. If you've checked into the badge tent, it looks a lot messier than this right now. Although I think the team have been tidying it today while I've been panically writing this presentation. Uh, so yeah, they work. Look at that. It's got a little thing on it and everything. Woo! So we started assembling. We, we got the sweatshop going. It was quite warm. We're not still not sure about the kind of sweatshop nomenclature, but it was pretty apt on uh, Wednesday last week when it was um, a lot nicer weather than this. Uh, so yeah, we, we we did some pretty good work between all of the volunteers who helped out with the. Um, with the sweatshop, um, just kind of flashing things, assembling things, testing things. Uh, so yeah, thank you, thank you so much for everybody who's volunteered for that. It was it was brilliant. Uh, yeah, I want to give a round of applause to all the people who have helped out with that. And then we stopped again. <laughs> Because it turned out that, uh, yeah, some of the screens weren't working. Quite a lot of the screens weren't working. Um, I was sat down making, script, making badges, and six in a row didn't work. Um, so yeah, we, we, we started figuring out that like 25% of all the badges weren't working. 
and we'd bought 23% more badges than we needed. Uh, that, one, one of those numbers bigger than the other one, it's in the bad direction. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, our, our volunteers figured this one out entirely on their own, it's brilliant. We didn't have to think or anything. Although we did quite a lot of thinking and panicking. We were kind of running around going, ah, while everybody else was figuring this one out. So yeah. We, we started assembling the working batches of screens because we were able to split off the ones that were working and the ones that weren't working while we debugged the actual problem. So Matt woke up at 1 a.m. with an idea of how to fix this. He broke it and started fiddling around with our initialization code. And he fixed it, but unfortunately, his badge was broken in a different way as well. <laughs> so he didn't realize he'd fixed it. And then I spent a load of time the next day saying, oh, I've already tried that, don't bother. Yeah. I didn't believe him. <laughs> Fair. I'm glad you didn't believe him. So yeah, we're up and running again. Woo, look at that. That is, that is a pile of 2,000 badges there, I think. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of badges. It took a lot of time, and um, there's a lot more still not in that picture. If we could have less people come to it, fewer people come to EMF next year, that would be great, so, <laughs> so that we don't have to assemble quite so many badges. And, and let's not do three circuit boards next time as well. Oh, we'll go for six next time. <laughs> No? Can I point out I know where you live, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we were able to start giving out our badges right after the opening talk, which is entirely unprecedented in EMF history. I got to buy myself my own barcode scanner because the entrance tent needed all of the ones that we normally steal from them. And I've always wanted to buy a barcode scanner, so now I have a barcode <laughs> scanner, it's fantastic. Almost everyone has actually picked up their badges by now. We issued 2,000 of them on that first day. And we're now up to 2,307. That's, that's wrong. It was 2,380 when I looked. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, we tried closing the badge tent and people turned up for badges. <laughs> Ben's not been allowed to leave the badge tent. He lives there now. So yes, we're, we're all incredibly exhausted. Oh, ooh, ooh. This is the end of my bit. I get to sit down now. So yeah, thanks everyone. Okay. <laughs> I haven't planned this. It's all right. None of us have planned this. Can I have a heckling oh. microphone? Yeah. Oh no, not supposed to heckle me. Be nice. Um, uh, what am I pressing? Press space. Ta-da! Um, yes, so they asked me to make it pretty and I got a bit carried away. <laughs> um, so I was like, ooh, it's a lovely wavy shape. We've got the C theme. Uh, we've got, uh, I was already drawing the, um, the big tiling graphic that you might have seen on the screens and on the tablecloths and stuff. I was like, oh, I'm really into the groove of drawing sea creatures now. Um, but now I have the opportunity to make them shiny. So um, uh, I was sketching all kinds of things on, on, on paper, and I was like, oh, this is, this is brilliant. I've never done this before. Um, and, uh, uh, and then I, but I was having trouble figuring out the scale, um, and then I... I got my very own prototype boards to play with, and I got the paint markers out, and I was like, oh, actually, I think this is actually how much I can fit on there. Um, so that was, that was really good fun. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen when I press this button. What have we got next? Uh, yeah, so you can probably tell, uh, as I say, I got a bit carried away. Um, uh, Clement was absolutely fantastic on working through with me on iterations of... Uh, oh, this is a great idea, but... <laughs> but we can't do that, because it won't but, work. Yes, we need, we need to squeeze too many electrons here. We can't fit the seaweed in. Um, <laughs> I, I literally said that. <laughs> yes, so it's like, oh, um, so it was a really interesting challenge of uh, working with the circuit traces as a medium 
because if you sort of hang on, if I doot, doot. Uh, so it's it's uh, so the the top of the board was less challenging because there's a lot less a lot less going on. So it's like oh, we can. Um, there's some blank space there, the ground plane. I can play with that. I'm sure I can do something nice there. Oh no, the electrons have to fit through. Um, but uh, eventually we sort of iterated through it and went, okay, you can have this much coral here and here and here. Don't put anything there. Stop putting things here. Um, but, and uh, like, you can have that fish, but it can't be shiny. Um, so <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, I, I really recommend it as an exercise. It's, it's, it's a really fun challenge, and I'm, I'm hoping they'll have me back again next time. Uh, and it was an absolute pleasure, and seeing them all come together is just ridiculous. But yeah. can, if, can if, I just say at this point, like at, at the point where I said, like, okay, none of this will work, <laughs> I honestly believe that none of it would work. Mm. And I thought we'd have to throw all that art away. And you actually managed to fit it in every constraint I gave you. So that, that was amazing. It, it turns out, like, if, if you have some, because I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what any of these chips did. I was like, I don't, I've just got, I've just got the layout uh, a draw on top of that. It's like, but you can't restrict me to just one color. I need board traces and I need shiny things. So, but with, with actually s sitting down and, and spelling out um, like which areas to protect, we managed to figure out sort of a way of communicating that, um, which hopefully we'll, we'll get around to writing up sometime so you can learn from my headaches and, uh, and so much art thrown out. <laughs> so, so but, what stuff on there is cool, but they won't be able to see because there's components on top of it? Right, yeah, we should show all the hidden stuff. Okay. Um, oh, you we got the chest right there. So, John T went, well, it's under the water. Can we have a treasure chest? Because it's a board about secrets and, and things. So, it's like, oh, okay, it has to have a hidden treasure chest, which is under the screens on the front of the board. <laughs> but please don't pry them up because you will break the screen if you do that. <laughs> do it really carefully. <laughs> We're running out of spares, <laughs> although we do have some, so if you need a screen fixed, we can do that. Yeah. But are they allowed to lift up the battery? Yeah, yeah. 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 gently, yeah, yeah. gently. Yeah. Because if you look under the battery, you'll find an octopus <laughs> with a glowing golden eye, uh, which made me very happy. And if you need to, uh, if you want to, um, Sold yourself to an auxiliary power supply. You've got a nice little um, uh, seahorse and starfish to, to attach onto. Um, but where lots of hidden stuff is, whoops, wrong way, is on the uh, extremely busy bottom board. So um, there's a there's a special request. Is that the um, the so uh, the is that the CPU it's under? Oh, uh, that's, no, the, that's the, the memory chip. That's the memory chip. Okay, so remember your sharks. Remember your IKEA sharks. Um, I put a little, um, one of those circle accent things on top of the fin so you would know who it was. Um, but there was also a special request that the crypto chip obviously needed a cryptid under it, so we have Nessie there as well. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's most of it. Yeah, there's also the little red board. Yeah, oh, yes. And there's a, um, a last minute addition was our cool little adapter from uh, PCB GoGo. Uh, and I'm like, can you, just, can you just maybe spruce this up a bit as well? Because it doesn't match. So. <laughs> and you did that in what, half an hour? Uh, <laughs> Some time. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I was like, uh, I'm drawing octopuses anyway for everything else. <laughs> I might as well add some more. And I reused the seahorse, that's me being lazy there. So, no, this was a really fun and a really amazing experience. And like s them taking the time to interface with me on uh, making this functional and, and letting me have free reign with the pretty was, was uh, a really wonderful experience. So thank you all so much for trusting me with this. I had so much fun. Thank you. Oh, and 
I've been asked to point out something else which is um, you might not notice unless you get your microphone, microscope out um, or your magnifying glass is that behind the weed, what's this area here at the end of the bus with all the fish? So if you follow the fish, um, behind the weed is a moray eel chasing a couple of fish. Ooh. Yeah. Is that working? Yeah. Yes. Oh, well. I'd miss that one. <laughs> There's quite a lot on here. Have you seen the, um, there's little uh, anemones everywhere. There's some on the front board as well, around here, and little bits of coral. So they, um, it's a bit, it's a little bit darker than I expected on, on the finished board, but yeah. Um, I hope you have fun looking at it, and I can't wait to play with mine, so I hope you all have a great time with it as well. Thank you very much. So apparently I'm doing a slide as well. Uh, so yeah, um, thanks for everyone who spent some time hacking on the badge, whether it's software or hardware. It's been really brilliant looking on Twitter and IRC and various social media things and just walking around the camp, seeing people doing fun stuff. Uh, so there's actual, there's games on the App Store now. There's uh, three separate Pride visualizations, which I think says a lot about EMF in a very good way. Um, and, and there's people been doing stuff with the hardware as well. Uh, we made three and a half thousand of those expansion boards in red. Uh, there's still loads of them left. So if anyone has hardware hacking ideas and they want some spares or some extras to do things, swing by the badge tent probably pretty soon because I don't know how much longer we'll be open uh, and, and get some of those. Uh, people are doing some really cool things with those, uh, and also the people messing around with 3D printers and building cases and joystick nubbins and all these wonderful things. It, it's so great to actually see people making use of the badge and expanding on things that we never even thought uh, of doing. So yeah, thank you all so much. And I think that is the answer. <laughs> I don't know why I came back up here because I don't have anything to say, but <laughs> I, I personally, um, this is one of my first times doing the kind of team lead role and I just want to thank the rest of the team for all being completely amazing. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been a great badge project this year. We, we've got it done and we've had enough for everyone and it's just been, it's been really nice and I now get to sleep, which is fantastic. <laughs> So I just thank you everyone.